The twin spacecraft Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have operated in space for 45 years instead of Plan 5, and they are still there transmitting strange signals to Earth. Scientists believe we won't lose contact with the Voyagers until 2025, but will they have time to show us anything else? Is there any chance their journey can continue? The Voyager missions were initially launched to reach Jupiter and Saturn and the major moons of both planets to photograph them. Thus, thanks to their images, scientists were finally able to see the surfaces of the moons around Saturn, which had previously seemed to be just bright dots. That was the beginning of a series of discoveries related to one of the moons, Enceladus. Scientists were shocked by the fact that Saturn's moon showed geological activity. Moons are usually covered with craters, sort of scars left after collisions. These craters do not disappear. Full moons are stationary and there's no geological activity. On the contrary, Enceladus appeared to be smooth like pearls. This could mean it's forming an atmosphere and one day life could probably originate there. Today we know that the reason for the smoothness of Enceladus lies elsewhere, namely in cryovolcanism, that is, the melted ice that covers the satellite ensures the displacement of ice masses and the formation of new ones. But in the 70s, nobody was aware of this, as well as of Jupiter's moon Io. Before the voyages, it seemed like a tiny bowl of rock and ice at a distance of 800 million kilometers from the sun. But the legendary probe presented scientists with a different picture. There was no ice on Io, only raging volcanoes everywhere. The ash plume from the eruption of the largest of them reached a height of 400 kilometers. That was the first time active volcanoes had been seen somewhere other than on Earth. It turned out that Jupiter's enormous gravity makes the moon's tectonic structures constantly move. This results in extreme volcanic activity and magma emissions far beyond Io's surface. The voyagers also showed scientists Jupiter's radiation belts in the never-before-seen planetary rings. They were first spotted by Voyager 1 in 1979. Several months later, Voyager 2 conducted more extensive imaging which allowed rough determination of the ring structure. Then it was a tone of Saturn, the owner of the most extensive ring system in the solar system. They consist of countless small particles ranging in size from micrometers to meters. We know this thanks to NASA's Cassini spacecraft, which spent 13 years studying the moons. However, if the Voyagers hadn't captured bizarre interlacing around Saturn, scientists would never have sent Cassini. The same happened with Saturn's moon Titan. The Voyagers were the first and noticed liquid seas on Titan, and Cassini only confirmed that 40 years later. It seemed that after five years in space, the Voyager mission came to an end. But luckily it happened otherwise. The mission was extended. Voyager 2 went to explore Uranus and Neptune, and Voyager 1 headed to the unknown moons of Jupiter. But how could they continue the mission if they were only expected to last five years? The twin Voyager probes weighed 773 kilograms each, while newer devices such as a Japanese Akatsuki release in 2010 are at least 200 kilograms lighter. Of that total weight, each Voyager carries 105 kilograms of scientific instruments. These include the Imaging Science Subsystem ISS, which consists of two television cameras. The first one is wide-angle with a low resolution of 200 millimeters. The second camera uses a narrow-angle lens with a higher resolution of 1,500 millimeters. But these technologies are almost silly compared to what's aboard the James Webb Space Telescope, a camera with several matrices, sophisticated dedicated prisms and lenses, numerous shutters, and autonomous mode. Nevertheless, the voyagers made quite a stir. Even though as the mission moved farther from the sun, the objects in the photos became dimmer, the voyagers managed to transmit hundreds of thousands of photos with a storage capacity of only 67 megabytes. Today, you'd hardly be able to make a good TikTok video with such phone memory. Obviously, it wasn't about the cameras. What was it about then? Power. It's totally unlikely. Each Voyager has three radioisotope thermoelectric generators and the fuel use of plutonium-238 oxide. As the isotope of plutonium decays, the probe's power decreases. In 2011, it fell by 57% as compared to its launch power. The remaining power would be insufficient to keep all the subsystems running for so long. That's why scientists decided to shut down some of them to save energy. This begs a question. How did the Voyagers manage to get this far from Earth? It's all about a carefully chosen launch time. Scientists took advantage of a rare alignment of the outer planets in the late 70s. This arrangement of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune occurs approximately every 175 years. 
This allows a spacecraft to follow a particular trajectory and make a full planet tour for a minimum of propellant and trip time. This is a so-called gravity assist. When passing each planet, the spacecraft uses its gravity to increase its speed and reach its next destination. Using this technique, the flight time to Neptune was reduced from 30 years to 12. Voyager 2 was launched first. Its trajectory was developed to fly past Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Voyager 1 was launched second, but on a faster and shorter trajectory. It was designed to send the spacecraft closely past Saturn's largest moon, Titan. At the same time in the 90s, Voyager 1 overtook the slower deep space probes Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 and became the most distant human-made object from Earth. But does this mean we can keep using the Voyagers? The speed of digital data transmission between the Voyagers and Earth is constantly decreasing as the spacecraft travel further from Earth. For example, when Voyager 2 traveled from Jupiter to Saturn, the data transfer rate was halved. What can we say about fast data exchange if Voyager 1 is currently at a distance of 18.5 billion kilometers from Earth and Voyager 2 has flown 15 billion kilometers away, and they keep moving away at roughly the same speed of over 60,000 kilometers per hour? However, the distance doesn't yet prevent maintaining the connection with the devices. The Voyagers continue to search for the boundary between the heliosphere, the region of our sun's influence, and the interstellar medium, and they even send new data. Voyager 1, for example, managed to record sounds where there just can't be any sounds. It turned out that this noise occurs when the solar wind waves collide with waves coming from other stars in interstellar space. This means the Voyager mission devices help scientists get information about the interstellar medium parameters, which just can't be obtained in any other way. Researchers hope to gain enough info while the Voyagers still have fuel. However, there's a but. Voyager 1 seems to have gotten lost. In 2022, NASA announced that the readout from Voyager 1's attitude control system didn't seem to match the spacecraft's movements. Scientists assume the probe is confused about its location in space. This is how it works. The attitude control system sends data about the interstellar medium surrounding the spaceship. The signal passes through a giant antenna directed towards our planet. But now it only gives engineers random numbers that don't reflect what's actually happening on board. Scientists are struggling to understand the nature of the problem. If they fail to do it, we may lose Voyager 1 sooner than expected. The scientist's task is complicated by the fact that the probe is very far away. Voyager 1 signals take 20 and a half hours to reach Earth, and exchanging messages between the space agency and the probe takes two days. There's another problem. Back in the day, thousands of employees worked on the Voyager mission, but today there are no more than 20 people working part-time. That's too bad because there's still something the Voyagers could see. When the probes run out of power, it doesn't mean they'll get stuck in zero gravity. The Voyagers use fuel to keep the subsystems running, so they'll continue to fly, but they'll stop turning the antennas in the right direction and sending signals to Earth. Currently, the Voyagers have moved beyond the influence points of the solar wind, and after 20,000 years, they'll cross the Oort Cloud, a swarm of comets and icy debris orbiting the sun at a distance of up to 100,000 astronomical units, that is 100,000 times the distance from the sun to the Earth. This will be the final destination of the journey through the solar system. And although we'll lose contact with the probes by then, they'll still be silent witnesses of space phenomena. After 500 million years, the voyagers along with the entire solar system will make a full revolution around the center of the Milky Way. You guys know everything in the galaxy revolves around the center, right? Now it's impossible to predict what will happen on Earth by then. But in the past, in that amount of time, the supercontinent Pangaea formed and collapsed. Scientists also assume that in galactic orbit, the spacecraft will oscillate up and down. At the same time, Voyager 1 will oscillate more dramatically than its twin. According to assumptions, Voyager 1 will travel so far above the main disk of the galaxy that it will see stars at just half the density as we do from Earth. Besides, the same difference in vertical motion will also shape the differing odds each spacecraft has a survival. Yes, you heard me right, survival. The thing is that the Milky Way's vast clouds of interstellar dust are very dangerous. Dust will pound into the voyages at speeds of a few kilometers per second. Even a dust grain only one thousandth of a millimeter across will still leave a small crater. These grains will steadily hit the hull, which can slowly chip away at the spacecraft skin. Of course, the dust won't change the trajectory, but the gravity of the Milky Way's clouds can easily do it. 
The clouds have so much mass concentrated in one place that they may fling the spacecraft into new orbits, sometimes much farther out, sometimes even deeper towards a galactic core. In this sense, Voyager One is at greater risk. Its vertical oscillations mean the spacecraft will spend more time above and below the galactic plane where the clouds are thickest. But despite the potential dangers, the Voyagers will probably have time to visit another star. Voyager One will move to the constellation Alpha Eucas, and millions of years later, the probe will say hi to a red dwarf named Glies 445 in the constellation Camelopardalis. Meanwhile, Voyager Two will reach the constellation Sagittarius and visit a star named Rus 248. It could also be that the Voyagers will see stars that haven't been born yet, but why should we care whether the Voyagers will meet them if we no longer exist by that time? We actually should, because the probes carry valuable cargo destined for distant civilizations, two golden records with a collection of information about humanity and our home planet. They contain photos of Earth, sounds of animals and birds, and words in various languages. Hello from the children of planet Earth. It also contained communication of our solar system in relation to pulsar stars, and even instructions on how the record is to be played. This seemingly frivolous idea may well be the last proof of our existence, because the records were designed to last billions of years in space. Under the gold plating, there's a protective aluminum cover, and beneath it, there are engraved copper discs for additional protection. The records were placed on the voyagers so that the engravings would be hidden. If the records survive, they'll last about five billion years. No more. Why? Because after this period, they'll be in the Great Andromeda-Milky Way collision. The fate of the Voyagers depends on the conditions of this merger. Will they be able to survive? If the devices survive, they can live on for trillions of years. That's long enough to enter genuinely unexplored space. By that time, stars will exhaust their fuel, and the star formation processes in the universe will completely cease. The voyagers would drift in a universe that would be absolutely unrecognizable to us, populated by black holes and the remnants of neutron stars.